it's rec uh, what do you say mm. it's recording right yeah it looks like yes okay yeah we can start now yeah, the first problem is for the letter combination of a phone number they have given a string containing digits from 2 to 9 uh, inclusive both i mean both 2 and 9 written all the possible letter combinations that the number could represent a mapping of digit to letters just like on the phone buttons uh, is given below and know that one does not map to any of the letters okay so two three so combination uh, uh, corresponding to two you have three possible letters and combi uh, and uh, for three you have again three possible letters so three to three nine so all these nine possibilities are there a d a e three three six three nine Although the answer is in lexicographical order, your answer could be in any format you want, any order you want. Yeah, so any queries in the question? So basically, A, D, A, E, A, F, B, D, all means two, three. Uh, uh, pardon? So basically, A, D, A, E, A, F, all means two, three. Yeah. So it's similar like uh, uh, many places they tell uh, like these companies like Geico or some other companies they tell 1-800-Geico. Uh -huh. So basically when they say Geico or any number, uh, any text that means a number which can be mapped. Yeah. Mm. So basically this is a good way to visualize this so if i give if i give you a phone number like uh uh a e a d uh that means two three two three yeah uh -huh. mm. so basically many places advertisements you might have seen they just tell something like this they would only say a e a d but if you go on the number pad it will become two three two three Mm. Or I can even give BFCD. That will again means two three two three. It's a way of encoding, right? Kind Sorry? of a way of encoding, like rather than giving the numbers, they are giving the alphabets yeah. to them. Yeah. So what's the use significance of that? So basically, uh, if you have, like I mentioned, any advertisement firm, uh -huh. for example, they will say. Uh, if you if you write there, can you write on the right hand side? Yeah, sure, I can. So they say like call us at one one eight uh, one mm -hmm. hyphen eight hundred. Yeah. Hyphen Geico. G E I C O. G E I C O. I -C -O. Okay. So basically, they will only mention this thing. But if you if you have to call them, you will first press one eight hundred. Then you go to your mm -hmm. number pad and find G. Where is G? G is at four. Four, yeah. Then E is three. I is uh, four. 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 P uh, is two and yeah, six. Yeah. Yeah. So that's how they get mapped. Mm. So they might be using similar algorithms, right? To actually mapping this. It's not algorithm. It's uh, yeah, it's kind of algorithm. If you go to number, but I I did this problem a while ago. That time I realized like why they put all these A B C Ds on the number pad. Uh, yeah. Before that, I never realized like why they put this A B C D on the number pad. So basically, uh, uh, so what what it has generated four G was four. E was a three. Eight hundred. G stands for four. For four. Three. Three. Four. 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 Then two. And two. Two six. Yeah. Six. And six. Yeah. So basically, mm -hmm. they could have told you this also, but uh, it's a way of their advertisement. And and what they do like the starting number one eight hundred if they are not getting this unique combination they can make a one eight eight zero eight zero one or something like that so they can play with the starting numbers and the last guy could remain same 
So what what will be the significance of that? I mean, why did they do like that? They could yeah, have just a way to remember. It. So if I tell you call Gaul Gaiko, so oh. it's difficult for you to remember four three four two six. But okay. but for if you have to call Gaiko, you can say like oh one eight hundred would be same. After that, I have to just press Gaiko. So Gaiko is a insurance firm in US. So this is many other companies also does the same thing. Like it's very common here in US. Yeah, uh, sim sim similar like one double eight zero one eight zero zero and Apple something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you won't, you won't remember Apple's phone number, but you remember like one eight hundred hyphen Apple. It's easy for it to remember. Yeah. Mm. No, yeah, makes sense. Yeah, Sim, it's a really good way of breaking down the problem to this way. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. The real world application uh, he gave. Like, yeah. yeah, this is a real world application. Mm. So I was thinking about a solution here. Yeah. Or <clears throat> I can share my screen. Sure, 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 sure. Nice talk. Go ahead. Please let me know when you can see my screen. Can you see the whiteboard? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what I was thinking uh, of, uh, so there are different ways of solving this, but I was thinking using the Brecht, uh, Brecht first search way. Mm -hmm. So if you see, uh, there are different states which can be generated from here. So starting from an empty state, if I have given one, oh, sorry, two, three, and before that, I also want a mapping of one does not represent anything. Two represent uh, A, B, C, and three represent uh, D, E, F. So basically, when I got two, three, so what could be the different things I can start from there? It could be A, it could be B, and it could be C. Yeah. Now I have a three, uh, three also. Three represent D, E, F. So, so what different things I can generate is A, A, D, A, E, and A, F. Similar for B also, B, D. Like I'm just combining the next letter with the previous one. You're generating the combina combinations, right? I mean. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then B, E, and continue in the same way for C also. And if I would have four also, I could have uh, gone one step further. Four is, what is four? Four is. GHI. GHI. Oh. GHI. And then I could have ADG and then ADH and keep on going like this. So in that way, last last level, the leaves would be my answer. When the length of digit is equal to length of your string, right? This length, AGH. If this is of length three and your digit length is three, when it matches, that would be the condition when you'll get one. No, uh, that could be differ. If you see, uh... well, I think that should work. If, oh, if yeah. one is there, then the length is not the same because one is mapped to empty space. But that is still one character empty space also, right? No, it's empty. It's not like an empty space. It's like an empty string. So uh, what I'm trying to say is it's not Actually, we can't say if we have three, uh, three, uh, if I have three digits, the answer would be like of three only, because there could be like, uh, let's say, Four letters. nine is W. Still, you only have that much, right? Yeah, I would have that much, but there is this nine thing, which would generate four different things rather than three. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, no, but that is the four nodes, right? So four nodes, yeah, yeah. But 
what he is trying to say is the digit length what is given will be will have to match with the yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, alphabets at the end yeah that is right so yeah so my approach was going uh taking one character from each and then combining them and keep on going one level down hmm yeah we can go with the dfs yeah but uh, also too right cuz we can yeah. go all the way to the bottom and we go up yeah that also works yeah mm-hmm. i think that will be far better dps will be better because uh, dfs will be better because the length uh, the height will be constant but in case of dfs the width is increasing at every level no mm-hmm. or comp- i mean computationally it will be more expensive compared to dfs Mm, I don't think so. Both will be same. In fact, the DFS will have the stack, right? Yeah. Mm, stack but the overhead. stack with the length of the high only versus the other one, the stack. Let's say you look at the, uh, you know, the the one <laughs> previous from the last level. Then you know when before we traverse, you know, with DFS when we go all the way to the last level, then we have to store mm. all the data. on uh the level above it right in this right. case might be not a big problem because we are only have a abc uh a small space but compared to uh stack i think stack would use less memory less space mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i can show the bfs solution and if somebody has a bfs solution they can share yeah sure yeah good santosh is going right no i see i think we're showing bfs mm-hmm. can see my screen yeah 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 so basically uh, i was doing kind of a level order traversal this will define what maps to what like two uh, two maps to abc d maps to this and nine maps to this then first i put like empty state then take one uh, one character at a time uh take one digit then out of the digit take the if it is to take abc then uh right now in the queue it size one then i'll take one character i will put so right now what will happen so here first i'll remove uh, this empty thing and then start taking each character from the digit and then it will become so i'll put a comma b comma c first then so this is done then after that now in my queue i have a b c i'll take a, a uh so now the next digit is 3 if you have from here so first we were having 2 and then i have 3 Three donates uh, uh, D E F, and then then I'll start. Now my queue size was A B C uh, three. Then I'll start taking one one thing from the queue and start uh, merge, uh, like concatenating with the mm. one. Like it will become A D, then A E, then A. Yeah, yeah. a f so similar way then a b d and keep on putting the q i think mm-hmm. i will get my result yeah so basically i was doing kind of a level order traversal if you see hmm. yeah what is the uh, the reason that we put the insert the empty string to the q on line 15 yes yeah, so uh, so we can uh, we can uh, skip that instead uh, so th- this is to make a general algorithm i could have put uh, a like i could have put a comma and 
and put like B and C here only and started with the other one. Yeah, the, oh, start okay. with the first one, yeah. Yeah, but it, yeah, it clean that like you put empty space so you can. So then I have a common algorithm. I, I don't have to do a tweak. I see. Yeah. So, so empty, empty string represent the root, the top root. Yes. Right? Yeah. Oh, okay. It's nice. What about the time complexity? So time complexity would be we are visiting each, uh, I think, uh, each character every time. So and, mm -hmm. and going through each combination. So I would say the time complexity would be number of... Uh, so if I have uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, then we are combining A, A D, E, E, A, F. It all depends. It all how many states I have in my tree. So let's say uh, if we have raised to power n. yeah three raised to the power n into four raised to the power n, I think, because correspond uh, there are digits <clears throat> two, three, four, five, and six are having three digits, right? Mm -hmm. And eight also, I think, and uh, seven and nine are having four digits. So mm -hmm. possible in the worst case, let's see if two merges, two matches with nines, and three possibilities. I mean. 3 raised to the power n for these and mm -hmm. and for this one if you have 4, 4 raised to the power n or but in general, to power n. Yeah. 3 raised to the power n oh, yeah in general you can say and that depends the way they have encoded it how would you write out the time complexity yeah just write 3 raised to the power n I think let me one second So, so we are discussing it should be three raised to the power n. Con considering everything is three, so basically three nodes. If every if you see here we have three states, it will become uh, nine here. It will become twenty seven here. Hmm. So we are going like three three. So it will become three zero three power zero three power one one sorry one. Um. 3 power 2 plus 3 power 3 plus 3 power 4. And I, and I don't think, I don't know till where it will go, but if you use the higher one is 3 raised to the power n, and the big one notation, it would be 3 raised to the power n. So in 4 to the power n. Which one? Answer. When nine uh, has like four characters, so is it like uh, worst case should we take like four to the power n? So he's considering Eight. that everything should have three. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is just to visualize like why three raised the power n. Okay. But how, how to get the n, which is tricky now? How many levels it would be? The number of level we go number the of, length of the phone number, right? Uh, digit, uh, yeah. Two, three, yeah. four. Mm -hmm. Depend on the input, right? Yeah. So yeah, length of the digits, uh, length of the uh, number, yeah. So that would, so n would be uh, the length of the uh, phone number, whatever we have. So then we can say it's a theory of power, and then yes. Uh, there are exceptions where we have four, th uh, four states also, but uh, yeah, this is considering we are only having three states. So we have length of 10, 10 to the power of four. That probably going to be a lot, right? Time. So, so you can length of phone number is 10? 10, yeah. So then it will become, yeah, 3 raised to the power 10. Too much. Oh. Okay. So okay. Four, if, yeah, 3 to the power 10. But if you see... The power 10 itself is 1024. Not 3, I mean the 10 to the power of 3. 
I mean, uh -huh. wait. When the, okay. land, the land of the phone number would be 10, so it'll be, wait, um, three to the 10, yeah. So any combinational problem I've seen, if you on lead code, like combinational, sum one, two, they are like crazy exponential complexities. So I think that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. I have like, yeah. So think in that way, these kind of problems could not be like have a really, really optimized solution where we have to print a lot of combinations. So if you get somewhere in the interview, it's okay. It can go it's on the brute force side. only. I mean, all because all the exhaustive cases we are checking, right? We are not optimizing anything. No such yeah. problem. Whatever possible cases are there, we are just enumerating them and depending yeah. on that. Yeah. So. Uh, what happens if the number is repeated? Still the same thing. Do we still count it in the combination? Same digit, like same like same letters. Yeah, we can do some optimization, I don't know. Because algorithm will be same. Then I think uh, we have to some... Because... The effects with memoization you can use, like, if you see some repeating numbers. No, you can't use memoization because what happens is there are some different numbers before this. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Mm. But yeah, it's a special case for that only. I mean, repeating them. Yeah. But even if if it repeat the number, then like for example, we have letter A. If they repeat again, we have we must include like A A, right? Yeah. Double A in there. We cannot like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but no. But how will you optimize it? That was the question. Like, unnecessary uh, will be. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't think. Look at the tree. I don't see. Uh, anywhere we have the overlapping sub problem because every every path we go they look like it's unique yeah no. okay I think, uh, yeah, what would be the space complexity is the same, same like yeah, yeah, same right to the length of stack i think length of it stack be, no uh, it would be the uh, maximum nodes at any level yeah, if you are using DFS, sorry, DFS. Yeah, so maximum node. So basically, if you see, it's a BFS. So we keep on removing things and adding new things. So what would the leaf value? That would be the answer. Like at the leaf level, we would have uh, what? How many nodes we'll have? So we are doing this three raised to power n nodes, like three raised to power ten nodes. It will be same. Yeah, same that? time. Yeah, because at last level you'll have three raised to the power n nodes, and that is what adds time complexity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think. And also we'll have to consider the alphabets that we are storing. So, so three raised to power. Dictionary, dictionary. Yeah, yeah dictionary. Mm -hmm. But that should but be called. I think. Uh, mm -hmm. The string length also what we are actually storing. So because that is also increasing as we keep on going down the tree. So that is also equivalent to the height of or the nodes. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah. No. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. If somebody has a DFS solution, we can see how others can move. Yeah. DFS. I think. So it's like uh, I'm creating a dictionary first here. And uh, just after that, at every step, I'm backtracking it. Uh, you can just starting zero length empty string we are passing in the str and these are the digits like uh, whatever like two three or whatever and dict and rest we are passing and this is the condition where i'll have one partial solution when the length of a string will be equal to your digits we'll append it else 
uh, very next time we'll append whatever let's say two you have already done corresponding to two we'll append that character to this and reduce the digit uh, the digit will be same and subsequently it will go for the next If you are like 11, you say length of string equal length of digit. But if the digit is one, 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 then the, the string will be empty, right? You're right. saying one. It, it will be the same, right? The digits, whatever digits are, that is the number of the digits will we have the same number of alphabets, right? Corresponding. Oh, if you have one, you are saying, but we don't consider one in this case. Uh, yeah, problem one. statement says that uh, it digits are only from two to nine. Oh, okay. Two to nine, exactly, exactly. So, uh, in the backtrack, are you removing something also? No, I think it's just a name better backtrack. Because generally, we remove also. No, we are increasing. No, after every sequence, I'm increasing that digit. Like next digit, what I'll take. Uh, Might be the is misleading. Initially, yeah. we had three digits. So so now next step we'll have two digits again we'll have one digit so it's kind of removing only now see let's uh, two initially we had two and three mm -hmm. in the first step corresponding to two i took and mm -hmm. now i increase the i plus one so we'll be left only with it will start after two yeah, so two is removed from there I explicitly i'm not removing by forwarding the index two is neglected yeah you're not passing as function yeah. Function parameter as a reference, right? Therefore, actually, it is doing, taking care of the backtracking there. Yeah. So, can you walk through example? Sure, sure, sure. I have a uh, wait. I'll show you. Like, can you what? what like uh, this one is for two, three, right? Corresponding to two had, we had three possible cases and I passed an empty string mm -hmm. initially. So, uh, to the empty string, we added A to it. So, you had A. Now, again, we have three A represent. Uh, uh, represents three right uh, mm -hmm. next digit is three right so mm -hmm. corresponding to this three this a will be passed to it and all the possible combi combinations will generate now once mm -hmm. it matches the length of this is equal to length of digit will backtrack go for this go for this and then we'll backtrack to this back to two and again corresponding mm -hmm. to b you'll have all this and same way you can go like in each iteration. Okay. Oh, yeah. So, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Let me show you code one. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. okay. Okay, that's good. Yeah, let's switch to next one. Uh, so, solve the equation. So, we are given an equation. We need, it, we need to return the value of x in the form of x number of values. So hash values, no, number of hash stands for, I think, number of. And uh, the equation contains only plus minus operation and a variable x and its coefficient. If there is no solution, we return no solution. If for infinite solution, you have infinite, you return that. And if there is exactly one solution, we have, you return x is in the value of the number corresponding to this integer, corresponding to this variable. So after evaluating here, you'll have two. Since here, both LHS and RHS are equal. So for all the real values, both of them will be equal. So we have infinite solution. And this one will be zero. Again, evaluating minus one. And this LHS will never be equal to the RHS because of this two, two as a factor on the right side. So you'll have no solution for this. Yeah, any queries in this question? Your no solution example, if you go down a bit. Zero will never be equal to two, right? So if you don't have a X, then actually there is no solution. Is that what it says, right? 
uh, if you remove x, if you cancel from left and right side x, you won't have any solution for this because left side will, will be left with zero and right side will be left only with two. Mm, both with numbers, yeah. It can never be equal. But like on the example one, uh, example three, so we cannot remove x, right? We have two, no, I, three. Where to substitute x as maybe one or something. So we say one is not equal to. Oh, here you are saying you in the you want to substitute x with one. Yeah. For example, in this case, if we oh, are we? You have try. How do we remove x in this case? No, you uh, here. I'll here. X, like, even you take x that side, left side, yes, yeah. your left side will become zero, right? Uh, right side will have two. Okay. But here the condition is that you can't, uh, uh, what you are saying, the substituting so, x as well. So maybe x divide both side by x. So. No, but you have to take care of that x shouldn't be zero. In case if you mm. divide anything by x, we need to yeah. take care of those conditions. Yeah. Yeah, that's why only one solution will exist for, for this x equal to zero. You are telling if you substitute x, it will never be equal left and right. There is only one possibility at x equal to zero, both will be equal. But if we substitute here x zero, you'll never have uh, what is it? Equality will never hold over here. Yes. One way to uh, look at it would be two x minus x is zero, which is x is equal to zero. Whereas in example five, x minus x. Like I'm doing basic addition subtraction. When you move a variable to other side, you change the sign, right? Yeah. So yeah, x minus yeah. x is zero is equal to two, which does not make sense. So five would be no solution. Solution and it will have unique solution. Yeah, and for two x minus x is equal to zero, which is x is equal to zero. Yeah. yeah. So it is a basic algebraic equation with yeah. a single variable. Yeah. So you have to find the value of that variable. Yeah, that probably make it easier to move it on to one side and do the. Uh, yeah. Because for cancel dividing it, you need to take care of those conditions. Like shouldn't be zero. And that's better moving it to the left side and then basic. So, uh, algebraic operations is applying. No, it makes sense. Yeah, but you don't divide a variable which you want to find its value, right? So that is what we want to find. So you can't just divide that variable. Okay. No, but if it is not equal to zero, I mean, if I say that x will not be equal to zero, why can't I divide it by both sides by x? Because that is a variable's value you have to find. It's a normal algebraic equation which has a single variable. Variable, okay. So you are trying to find the value of that variable. So you cannot divide that variable itself. Okay, no. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so, uh, so I approach. approach. So is it only one variable like X or it could be X, Y, Z or, or multiple? No, the problem statement says variable X. X. Only one. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what if like we substitute X by, you know, a, a unique value and then for the the values will be there here, infinite solutions we have. Yeah. In this case, then how lot many number of values mm -hmm. have to be. Actually, we have to find the value for of that variable. So you can't substitute. Right. So you just have to find the value. Yeah. Okay, so this is more of an implementation. Problem. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
Yeah, looks me just looks to me that just a string parsing. Huh? Hey, yeah. No. With minor replacement or something. Yeah, so, so uh, and it will require some some uh, conversion that we have to convert the digit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what? Uh, I tried, but it didn't pass. If anybody has working exact implementation of this. Like I tried with this, but it was not passing. What I did, uh, like I wanted the real and imaginary part in this. First, I replaced every X I replaced with J, and uh, uh, then to the equal side. Whenever I find this, I made replacement with 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 the next one, and for every J, it was replaced by one J. So I got the real part and imaginary part in A and B. And just depending on that, I was trying to like I converted them to integer because it was in string. And since they want the result in the integer format, so I was returning. And these are the uh, conditions according to here. But it's not passing in my case. Yeah, here uh, I mean, though I have not tried, but what I'm thinking here that was initially split in two uh, two strings. Uh, one is the left hand side one is for the right hand side yeah and the uh, the right hand side will have the digit only now after that uh, tokenize uh, based on the operator plus and minus and to check that whether it's a it's a uh, uh, it has a variable or not just check the last character in that token if its last character is x that's a uh, that's a um, then keep it on the left hand side the last character for the token is just a number, then we can assume that's a number and keep it on the right hand side. So and how you I, handle uh, example two? So that be. So so example two. So uh, here in this case, uh, x is equal to x, right? Yeah. No. So when we split that. Uh, in two parts, so we'll move the X on the right hand side to the left hand side. Yeah, then it will be zero. Uh, zero. Yeah, and then then uh, we know that now on the left hand side we do have two X because to to get that how many uh, what is the coefficient? So we to get the coefficient value we just need check uh, we need to actually. Uh, convert the, the string uh, from uh, second last character to the first character. We, because there, the, the variable is only one character, and that will be definitely the, only the, the last character in that token. Yeah. So that's going to be 2x equals 0? No, no, actually, it's taking the coefficient of each x, but when he moves from right hand side to left hand side, the value, uh, the you, sign will change. Yeah, when you will move move from one side to another side, you have to change the sign as well. Mm. So then it will be zero. So when LHS is zero, then it is going to be either a no solution or an infinite solution, based on what you have on the right side, right hand, right hand side. So if that if we move it to the left side, so x minus minus x would be equal zero. So zero equals zero. That means that, that means solution. you don't have any variable here, right? Yeah, but actually mm -hmm. he is finding out what what you have to say. It is either a no solution or an infinite solution, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. So mm -hmm. in that case, if both the sides are zero, then it will be infinite solution. Or else if uh, one of the side has uh, like the left hand side has zero and the right hand side are in number, then it will be no solution. Uh, I kind of implemented. Can you some... repeat? Oh, sorry. Yeah, but uh, it was failing for few test cases. Uh, I, I just uh, did a similar approach of calculating the left hand side x coefficients and constants and right hand side x coefficients and constants. And based on that, I'm calculating the resultant equation. You can share your sketching if you explain it like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes.
Santosh, uh, you said something, right? Some time ago. Okay, yeah. Actually, what I was just trying to say, if you have the LHS side, when you actually do the evaluation, if, if it is zero, it means mm -hmm. X is zero there, right? So yeah. if you are equating to the right hand side also as zero, then it will be an infinite solution. Mm -hmm. But if you have left hand side as zero and R RHS has some value, then it means then it is it a low solution. No solution. Okay. Yeah. They so just want to differentiate actually between those two different conditions. That's yeah, all. That's what they explain in their example. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you. Uh, so I just uh, like kind of if I take this example. Uh, so I'm trying to uh, convert this string into uh, uh, two x plus two equals to x plus four. Then uh, like I I get a constant left left hand side x quotient which is two. Uh, Two comma uh, constant values two, uh, and also right hand side uh, x coefficient is one, comma constant is four, and based on that I'm trying to calculate the uh, what, what the answer is. Uh, so like uh, here x x left x is the x coefficient and left constant, and right x is the right coefficient and right constant. So I just show the code. Uh, First, I try to divide the uh, equation into two parts. Like, uh, I just want to uh, make them as two different strings like this. Uh, so that that will give me left equation and right equation. Uh, then, I, then I will take each each uh, string and I try to calculate x coefficient and constant value in that. So first. Uh, this one, this function will divide the equation into two parts. I, I, I iterate until I find an equal and just uh, return, uh, return the slices of the string. Uh, then this compress equation is the one that uh, converts the equation, this part, and give me uh, two comma two. So that I do is like uh, first. Uh, in a loop, I iterate and find uh, find a plus or minus or symbol like that uh, th with a two pointer approach, and then uh, I take that and I cast into a number, uh, and and I add that to x quotient value. And if it is a constant, uh, so if if the last uh, th this typecast will uh, will get a number like plus one or minus one or like that. So here. Uh, every time I get a, uh, if suppose I just, if I take this example of uh, x plus uh, five minus three x, then I iterate to that uh, and try to find a plus or minus in that. So first I will find a plus here. Uh, so I will slice this part of the string, which is x, and in that in that slice, I will see uh, whether the uh, last uh, last index uh, is x or not. If it is x, then I will typecast uh, the part of the string uh, other than that x. Like uh, x is kind of is like one x, so I will typecast that, which is an empty string. So my empty string will return one. Uh, but in this case, you don't have the coefficient explicitly saying one, right? So, yeah, so how that, do you? Uh -huh. uh, if the string is empty or just a plus or minus, then I will. Okay, return. okay. You take care of the typecast. Okay. Yeah. So, similar way. If, if then I will then I will move on. Then I will get five. Uh, so, I will typecast. Which it goes into this because uh, last index was not x. Uh, then I get the value. I add it into constant, and then I will get um, three. Uh, I will I will pass uh, minus three to the typecast, which will return me uh, a negative three, zero minus three. That we, that I will add it into constant value. That means uh, it already has five plus minus three, 
dot equals to two. So in the similar way, I will calculate for x and uh, constant portions, and I will return that. So that's how I calculate the x uh, x uh, x quotient and constant value for both the equations, and based on that, uh, I can I can make the value. But I have confusion with this infinity and no solution, so it was failing for some test cases between that. But other than that, it was working for normal cases. Yeah, I think it's looking promising to me. What is the condition for this no solution and an infinite solution? Like, what? how did you get that? Uh, so I just kind of confusion between that. But uh, what I thought was, if the uh, like I'm I'm uh, if coefficients of left x and right x uh, will will be equal. That means if left x minus right x is equal to zero, uh, then that means uh, there there is zero x coefficient. So coefficient of x is zero, which means no solution. No, actually, oh, in this actually, case, that will be infinite. Yeah, actually, in this case, when your left x is equal to zero and right x is equal to zero, then it should be an infinite solution. Yeah, yeah, both so, are, yeah. Uh, you can you can also, do it. Yeah, and also then you need to have a constant, then that gives no solution. Yeah, for constant, if you still have a constant when left x is zero, then it means it's a new, no solution. So you have no. almost done everything. Very small change you can do here, and then it is it will work. I think uh, that's what I'm doing, right? Like uh, left x is left quotient, right x is right quotient. If that they both are equal, that means x quotient is zero. And I'm looking if the constant value is not equal. No, to no, zero. no, 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 no. Go ahead, please. Go ahead. So actually, the here in this case, in no solution case, so left x uh, is not equal to right x. That's correct. Yeah. But before that, if you check, uh, left x is equal to zero and right x is equal to zero, it will be a no solution. And then you come down in the same if condition, uh, where, where your left x is equal to zero, you just say it's an infinite solution. Uh, sorry, no solution. Uh, if I compare uh, left x equal to zero, right x equal to zero, and if the uh, equation is like two x equals two x, mm -hmm. uh, then what's the answer for this? Okay. So this should be infinite solution. Yeah. So I just need to subtract that, and that, uh, the total value has to be zero, right? Not the left has to be zero and right has to be zero. So when you are actually calculating left x and right x, you are actually getting the zero values here. You don't have separate coefficients left there, right? In this case, I will get two and two. No, here if you see, your actually a left x will be, uh, it will be zero in this case, and right x also will be zero if you have a two x is equal to two x. Uh, I I think Santosh is right. I mean, uh, when uh, if you see the example, so where co uh, the left uh, sorry the x coefficients are same on both sides, but the constants are not same. Then that will be a no solution. I just kind of do like this. Uh, if two x equals to two x, then I will uh, uh, split the string into two x and two x of left and right part, and I will get the x coefficient and constant value, which is two comma zero and two comma zero. So, uh, like this is left x, and this one. Comma left constant, and the same way here the right x and right constant. Oh, so you are not moving them anywhere from right x to left x. So no, 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 he's not I'm moving. Kind of he's just individually. Okay, so in that case, uh, I think your uh, the second uh, condition, uh, right constant minus left constant. Should be equal to uh, first. You need to check for infinite solution here. Should be equal to zero, right? Then it will be an infinite solution, and then you go down, okay? And you, if you check left x is equal to right x, then you say it is a no solution. Yeah, the first case what you have written here, the right constant minus left constant is is not equal to zero. 
instead of that yeah. if you make it equal to zero and then return a condition as an infinite solution right so that will be an infinite solution right ha uh -huh. in that case and then mm -hmm. you come down in a, in your else if in your else if you actually do you you just have to check this one uh, left x is equal to right x so now this is right right so and, and yeah the okay what i would do is uh, left x is equal to right x and right constant minus left constant is equal to zero that will be infinite solution and then i will have another case downside And in that case, I will just check if left x is equal to right x. I will just say it is a no solution. So, uh, so to, no solution comes two times. Or like we don't need this condition now. Uh, in the no no in the no solution, actually, you don't need the right constant minus left constant is equal to zero. But what will happen if right constant minus left that therefore you have to take this infinite solution what you have written down to the top first because that has to be evaluated first. and then you make this else if here okay and you just don't che uh, check the other condition left uh, right constant minus uh, this one yeah and also yeah so you make uh, in in the else if you make just left x uh, is equal to right x for no solution no no you you keep that no not that on the second one yeah you make equals just make it equal to yeah I think that this should work. Uh, you should try it second time. You see. Uh, yeah, please cannot. It did not work. Oh, you mm -hmm. are getting an error somewhere else. Uh, Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Maybe I need to handle this. Kind of yeah, there are some other things there... also in this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. But I think that that solved. I think so. No solution, infinity solutions for the. Okay. So, yeah. Thanks. No problem. Any doubts or something? Stop sharing. Yeah, this is good. Yeah. No, let's uh, move to next one then. I'll check it and post it in Slack. Um, once again, it's. What? Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Okay. Concept is like I'm dividing the numbers into real and imaginary, and depending on imaginary, uh, I'm checking whether the solution would have infinite or not. So I'll post the with explanation in the Slack. Okay. Yeah, tallest billboard. So uh, you are installing a billboard and want it to have the largest height. The billboard will have two steel supports, uh, one on each side, and each of the steel support must be an equal height. You have a collection of rods which can be welded together. For example, if you have rods of length one, two, and three, you can weld them together to make a support of length six. We need to return the largest possible height of your billboard installation. If you cannot support the billboard. Return zero. Okay. So, in this case, uh, they have one, two, three, the maximum height to which they could go, of six. So left and right, uh, both because in order to support the beam, both the side left and right should be same. So some of this set and some of this set is six. So uh, output is six. But and here you can see, it's ten. So one thing is that either you can select it. Or you select in left or right, or you can discard it also. Like you can see, two, three, five have been selected in the left set. Four and six have been selected in the right set, and one have been discarded. So there are three possible choices for each of the numbers. And here it's impossible to get the equal subset. Like one, if you put in one, the other two, you won't be able to balance the billboard. So yeah, and uh, these are the constants. Like rod length should be less than twenty. Is less than thousand, and some of the rods is at most five k. 
you so you have multiple choices here so any approach in this or question queries in the question so the second example says you can actually not include one yeah because they haven't included one in either of the sets right mm -hmm. so so, so just we, find whichever is equal we, we can get seems, equal height uh, on both sides right yeah seems like equal subset problem with some minor i'm not sure just like mm, yeah it's it's not an easy problem though yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> i tried it but it could I, this also couldn't pass much but what intuition i got after doing like hi oh, yes go ahead to somebody there um yeah hi so yeah. i mean i haven't solved it but i have some i mean i haven't tried uh i have maybe an idea how we can start if we add them all together then we divide mm -hmm. by 2 that's how we know we'll know actually what the maximum was the optimal length i think it would be for a side no, so, for no, example, no. in the input one, example one, if we add one, two, three, one plus two is three, plus three, six, plus six is 12, divided by two, so it means that each of the rod has to be sum of six. Now, from, from that point on, we can probably um, uh, do recursively, uh, go one by one and subtract until we get to zero, until they're both equal to zero. <clears throat> So in Sorry. the second case, since the sum is coming to be odd, so... Yeah, that's, uh, it's now, for example, in the example two is odd, it's going to be what? Um, 21, right? 6 plus 5, 11, 15, 18, 20, yeah, 21. 21. Divided by 2 is going to be 10. So, I mean, that's the going to be for the rod length. And now we just have to pick which ones are adding up to 10. And then... Um, um, yeah, but they, they have to be when, whenever you take, for example, if you get to 10, uh, mm -hmm. those should not be counted in the other one. So yeah, you exclude them from the set. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I'm think, I'm thinking here yeah, that, I mean, um, uh, looks like that we can convert it to a zero one knapsack. So, that, so. Mm -hmm. the, Assuming that if we sort the sort the input and uh, start with the last uh, the biggest one, and that assume that that is the that is uh, in knapsack we have a weight right so that the last last length is we can assume that is the biggest length we can have and let's see for uh, can we build a uh, the same length from the remaining. And if we are done, then that is one of the possible solution. Then from the uh, the the back we can increase the height and then we can we can uh, try whether we can build that height too or not so i'm thinking in that way but that's a high level so, so you're sure. saying I mean, it's kind of like it's going to be like really do it kind, of, kind of like two backpacks that's what you're saying right we can for example if we start from the highest one we fill the backpack one and if it's still there left um, to fill in, uh, we take the next one, and if it uh, if it's good, I mean, if it fits in the first one, uh, then yeah. we put it in the first one. Otherwise, we put it in the second one, and then we go so on, so on. We try the first one, and then the second one, right? Yeah. So, so the question says that we have to find the maximum height, right? The possible uh, largest yeah. height, right? So, so I'm thinking that we will start with the, the longest height, uh, what we have right now, the single height, and then uh, try that whether we can, uh, we, can po uh, we can make a second part uh, equal to that height or not. If we can, that... Go ahead, please. Okay. No, no, I, no, I was saying something else. You go ahead. And and uh, if if we found a solution for that, then we can uh, we can uh, we know that this is the largest height. If we cannot uh, find a solution for that, 
that maybe we can uh, we can try other combination maybe small smaller or uh, the bigger one mm -hmm. okay can yeah, we somehow you... we can visualize we can we can draw it somehow if you want to share it. I'm just trying to actually convert this problem to into uh, because the intuition is that in knapsack we have the 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 weight up front, but here we don't know what will be the 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 length we can have. Yeah, I think what you are trying to say is uh, the way they want the solution to be. Yeah, uh, it's a DP solution. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Martino was saying, do you want to draw it on the board and explain it so it will be more. Easy yeah, for all of us to understand. Mm, yeah, okay. Go ahead. Let me see. Where was the. Oh, this is uh, for tomorrow, right? Uh... Tomorrow. Okay. So let's say we have one two, three, and six, which comes to total, of, which means each one have to be six. Um, so as, as uh, somebody mentioned, I forgot who, um, we we gonna have this sorted initially. So we take the last one. Can it fit here? Yes. So it fills the whole thing. Um, then we go to the, second to last three does it fill in here no it's already full we go here we put three two does it fill here it's already full we put it here two one does it fill here no we go and put here which is six so yes uh, for the second example one i'm sorry so one two three four five six right comes to 21 um, so each one of them they're gonna be 10 six fits here yes we put six here five fits here no we put five here four fits here yes and it fills uh, three no right here eight uh, two fits here no does it fit here? Yes, fills the whole thing. That's how we're gonna have it. And uh, let's see. So, and then for one and two, one and two comes down to one, All right? So, One and one. Two fits here? No. Fits here? No. Um, so that means we go to the next one. Fits here? Yes. Now we don't have any more, so we can't make it. I mean, that that's my uh, understanding. Maybe I'm missing something. So you're actually trying to find the getting the sum and dividing it and then trying to make it a two knapsack problem, right? Yeah. Uh. Mm. Yeah, first, first he's trying to find that what is the maximum possible height we can have. Mm -hmm. But what happens like in the case when you have 10, 10, whatever you got for the 21, but you are not able to get all the elements which are equal equivalent to 10, but still you will have a solution. Like if it is only eight, right? If they sum up only to eight, but still you have to show that. So how do you do that in this case then? Show, show what? So now, see, you, you got an answer for the 21, the case where you said 21. You got mm -hmm. uh, divided like into right? 10, 10, right? Yeah, I'm not Let's able if... to get a very good case for that. But if you have something lesser than 10, uh -huh. you, are, you are getting it. Like my, maybe like something you are getting 9. Okay. Yeah, so, right. This one is 9. Okay, but the, okay. the other, other side also, you get something 9 there too, right? Five or four, something. So then you will still report it, or how? How is that going to be? So 
unless you fill both of them up to uh, the number, the maximum, mm -hmm. um, you'll, if you don't fill it out, you return zero. As I said, the billboard cannot be supported, so we return zero. If they do, then you return the, um, turn the half, half of the whole sum. Okay. Yeah, that, that might work, yeah. Can you try some, some example with duplicate values? Okay, yeah, uh, let's see. Tell me the numbers. I don't know, one, two, three, 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 six, five. That comes to um, 11, 14, 17, 20, 23. Divided by two is 11. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's 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 make it sorted. Ah, doesn't doesn't matter. No, let's see it if it doesn't matter. matter. That's fine. Yeah. So five. Um, does it fit here? Yes, we put here. Six. Does it fit here? Yes, the whole thing. Um, now three. Does it fit here? No, not anymore. We put here three. Uh, three. Does it fit here? Yes. Three. Does it fit here? Yes. Two. Does it fit here? Yes. So three, nine, eleven. Exactly. So you return 11. Mm -hmm. I, saw, I saw him, somehow got the positive. Let's say this one wasn't two. Say this one was seven. So seven, does it fit here? No. Does it fit here? No. Go to one. Does it fit here? No. Does it fit here? Yes. So. Nine ten, so the uh, we return return zero. Oh, sorry, we return zero in this case. But uh, you can return something which is lower no. than eleven, right? But which is equal value. No, it says zero. The yeah. billboard cannot be supported. Return zero in that case. No, it says that if you cannot make at all. Yeah, if you cannot make it all, but if you if you can make it all, then you That's have to take that, that right? largest largest possible height. Yeah. Oh, you mean like so, uh, so it one, doesn't have to... one height? I can see here the six, three, okay. three and six. Oh, you mean like okay? So you mean like um, three, 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 six? I got it. Let's say if we add another three here, then it would be here six and three nine, and this one nine. Yeah, we should return nine then in that case. Oh, got it, got it, got it. Okay, so this makes every uh, a, a difference. So this case won't work. But could we still utilize two backpacks though? I think so. That is the only way it seems. Mm -hmm. So what I was okay. Yeah. So I I I wanted to share the screen what I tried. Okay. okay. Yeah. What I was doing is like to uh, show you. what i was doing uh, i i created left sum and right sum okay mm -hmm. so exhaustively i was trying all the three possible cases first i was adding one to the left sum and nothing to the right sum and then i was discarding that first wherever i added to it i just discarded that and the other way around again i added one to the right so again i was traversing through each of the numbers then i added two to the left so if I add two to the left, initially we had one and zero, right? So after adding two to the left, it will be three and zero. Okay. And now let's say you have discarded it. After discarding it, if you add two to the left, then it will be two, <clears throat> two and zero. And uh, to the, uh, again, uh, next thing that I was adding, this, these three possible case, cases were there. To them, I was adding two to the left first. To all these three possible cases. Mm -hmm. Then again discarding that i was using and again adding that to the right so what i found were we there were some like duplicates were coming dp of minus one two and one two so i was trying to replace it with the max value of because we had to get the maximum height right mm -hmm. so, and again i proceeded with the three adding three so i mean subsequently the cases will become very large once you go three people for four but after that because uh, like uh, 
I was trying to store the difference in some dictionary, but the thing was not working out in this. This was my approach, like what I was trying, like exhaustively trying for all the three possible cases, mm. rather than I think his way was more intuitive, like dividing it by two. Yeah, but he is also almost doing the same way what you are doing, right? Because you are trying to find the left sum, right sum. It is a similar yeah. way what he is trying to do. But only I am not understanding the way you said when where you said um, uh, negative infinity. What was that case? Which one? You are saying something like the DP is minus one two where, where you are that. Uh, this I am saying uh, merging like a DP of mi minus one comma two. Mm -hmm. This part. And DP of one comma two, if you say, so these things are like uh, it's a repeating only difference is in negative. That's it. These two are these two sub problems are repeating only. So we are replacing it with a max value. Okay. So you don't want to consider the, them in the uh, your counting. That is why you are making it max. Yeah. Okay. So this is going to be dynamic programming or is going to be uh, backtracking? I think back, this is a DP, what I was doing. Mm -hmm. okay. I was searching for these, uh, this overlapping sub problems. Like. So this is like the bottom ups, right? What you are trying to do? Uh, exactly. Okay. I think it would have been better had I drawn the table. Oh. That will be. Yeah, unfortunately, I also don't have a solution today. Yeah. Oh. Anyway, I will, I'll look at, uh, I'll check some more and then let's see if I can, I'll put it into the Slack or anyone can do this for the session. Yep. And let's see what they are suggesting. Yeah, actually, can you open that? Yeah, that will be a good way of actually understanding how they are looking for. Uh, for each rod, we can add plus x, minus x. Okay, we can select, uh, select a zero. Our goal is to write zero using the largest sum of positive terms. For writing the sum of zero, let's call the sum of positive terms written the score. For example, plus one, plus two, minus three has a score of six. Hmm. I mean, left sum and right sum, he is subtracting. Get, difference should be zero. That is what he meant to say, right? Mm -hmm. Then only two subsets should be equal. After that, uh, since the sum rods is bounded, it suggests to us to use the fact in some way. In EDP, already right wrote some sum in the first few terms. It doesn't matter how we get. For example, with rods this, we could have arrived at a sum of three in three different ways, but the effective score is three. So you look at the code. Yeah. Uh, The the code is uh, like the top down approach. Mm, that, yeah. mm. And in that case, actually, this memo is first we can actually just do the normal recursion instead of the memo version. Just understand the normal recursion. So mm -hmm. yeah, so in that case, uh, he is passing on uh, the rods array and then starting index right that's the only thing is passing on and uh, so when actually is going through in this uh, uh, else condition the lower one because the first is the base condition if i is equal to the rod's length then you will actually return whatever the value is right yeah uh -huh. okay or else you come to the last else because the second else is else if is for the memoir version mm -hmm. So if already value is present here. Yeah. yeah. So then actually he's talking like you find an answer for uh, the recursive way. Just move to the next index. Okay. So you are discarding the rods here. The first rod you are discarding. The whatever the index is you are discarding. That is the first one. And in the second case, he's trying to get that one. So he's actually adding that. No, sorry. He's he's no. Yeah, he is trying to add that. Therefore, he is at subtracting the rods i from the length. Okay, so the s is the length actually. Therefore, he is trying to store five thousand there. Max integer. Max integer, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
and then coming next he is actually taking that value but actually he is putting into the one is for first the the upper one is for the left side and the lower one is for the right side so that okay. is the way he is differentiating and the first one which he is just discarding so he is taking all the three and mm -hmm. then he is just finding what is the max of that and then returning the answer right uh -huh. so um, so yeah. this is taking 5000 times and each step is reducing for the left part right once you calculated the once you got the sum whatever rods length is, is subtracting from that yeah mm. so left and right that is what he is differentiating on line 19 and 20 20 and on 18 he is just discarding so he is using all the three conditions there uh -huh. mm. okay and then he is adding just the memoize version so for the memoize version you have that memo which is there defined on line number 8 and then when you come to this uh, function on line number 15 to 16 he's just taking care of that memo so he's so, just exhaustively checking for all the three possible cases yeah yeah so mm -hmm. that has to be done right so actually uh, at the ps was talking about the knapsack version it is exactly the same mm -hmm. but in this case you have to have a knapsack uh, one for the discarding and the other two are just for the left or right bucket. Mm -hmm. Exactly what Martin was doing, putting in left or right bucket. Yeah. The same way, but it is. You are uh, not discarding it. Like. Yeah, but the, at the end you have to discard. No, that is what he was saying. The one what he was talking about, it was not able to fit in any of the buckets. Then he just discarded it. Discarded. So, but here you have to go through each and every element uh, in a one, one knapsack problem. You have to discard it or you have to take it. So for whether you like it or not, we keep on doing it here. And then if you do it a memoize way, it, it actually optimizes. Yeah, the meat in middle is a bit difficult to even understand it. That is what I found out. So, but the approach one was slightly better to understand. This is, I mean, Cases are already known, just is using the modulation on the top of it. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, I think so. Well, yeah. I think the second solution is also worse, um, worse complexity. 3 to the power n, it's 3 raised to the power n. Okay. Mm, yeah. Is it? No, no, it's possible state. I think. Yeah, three days to the power n only. And by two, I Yeah. So the first uh, approach is actually much better. Yeah, in the intuitive, it seems trivial yeah, and intuitive. The only reason he's taking the s, the value s, he's taking the maximum value, right? The sum of rods is at the most 5,000. That is what he is taking the value there. From the constraint, right? From the nodes, yeah, yeah. This one is taking this one. Uh, yeah, and then then only the approach is much efficient. Yeah. Or the meet in middle is the actual real approach where you are not taking those constant in the, and yes, you are doing it, but uh, it's a bit difficult to understand. I also tried that, but couldn't understand much, so I just left it. But we need to work on this. I would say, you know, post solution in the slack if possible yeah yeah, yeah sure, sure with explanation yeah mm -hmm. might be interesting one to do problem rating is, no. yeah it is slightly okay. <laughs> low rating that everyone is not so good about that problem Okay, no problem. Okay. Thank you, Shashank. Sure. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Andrew. Thank, thank you, Martino. Yeah. Thanks, Shashank. Thank, thank you. Thanks, Martino. Bye. Thanks, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Yeah.